Hi everyone, it's Agnieszka Murdoch from 5 Minute Language. Welcome to my channel, make sure you subscribe if you're learning languages. I really appreciate it. So today's video is about the differences between British and American English. It's a topic that I'm really interested in myself and I know that many of you will be interested in as well because in my previous video, which was about how to sound more British, there's lots of comments from uh, actually American viewers who find this topic really interesting. So they might be interested, but you know, if you're learning English, you might be interested in the differences and similarities between the two languages, if you have a preference, for example, for learning British English or American English. I also got some comments about my American pronunciation being quite all right, so I feel like I can try pronouncing certain things with an American accent in this video as well. Let's start by saying that the two versions of the English language, the British uh, version and the American version, are very similar to each other. Obviously, if you're learning English um, and you learn from a British teacher, you will be able to communicate with American speakers. But there are certain differences. Some of them are more subtle, some of them are more obvious, and we're going to talk about all of them. So there are different types of differences between the two versions of the English language and they relate to things like pronunciation, spelling, vocabulary and also grammar. Uh, the last one is the most surprising one for many people because many people think that the grammar of the two versions of English are, is very similar uh, but actually there are some differences in how the different speakers use the language. So we're going to start with pronunciation because that's to somebody who's learning English that's the most obvious um, aspect that will make the two versions of English uh, different. So probably the most obvious one uh, which is something that you know when I was learning English I found uh, that when I heard this one I knew straight away if somebody was British or American and it's the pronunciation of the letter R uh, or in American English R. So for example when you say the word center in British English uh, there's like an a sound at the end whereas in American English you can clearly hear the r being enunciated so it's more like center or center. The next pretty obvious one when it comes to pronunciation something that will definitely tell you if somebody is American or British uh, is the pronunciation of the letter o in the middle of words. So in words such as uh, hot uh, in British English the o is more kind of closed uh, it's um, O, whereas in American English it's more like a, almost like an A sound, uh, so it would be heart. Um, excuse my American pronunciation again, uh, you know, some of you seem to think it's good from my pre based on the comments on my previous videos, but obviously I am not an American English speaker and I've never lived there. But basically the difference between the O and the A. So in the word top, for example, so I'm wearing a, a red top. Uh, in American English you might say, I'm wearing a red top. Okay, the next one is the pronunciation of the letter A in the middle of some words. So for example in the word bath, a British English speaker almost pronounces it in a way, especially if they're from the south of England, uh, they would almost pronounce it as if there was an R after the A, so bath. Uh, whereas an American English speaker will make uh, more of a kind of a sound in the middle of that word, so they would say bath. And that's how most uh, non-native English speakers actually learn to pronounce that sound, bath, rather than uh, bath. Same with the word pan. Uh, in, Amer in British English it's clearly an a sound, whereas in American English it's more of a e, so pan. Another one which I noticed quite differently relates to the pronunciation of foreign words. Uh, so for example the word herbs in uh, British English is derived from French uh, and American speakers actually pronounce it in kind of like a French way so they say uh, herbs. If you're an American English speaker and you think I'm wrong let me know in the comments what the correct pronunciation is for your specific version of American English but I've certainly heard um, you know food bloggers say herbs where they don't pronounce the initial H uh, in the same way as, as the H is silent in French and obviously that's where the word originates from. I actually had a funny situation when I was in uh, Texas a couple of years ago. Uh, I went into a Starbucks and I asked for a pain au chocolat. They were quite confused by that. I don't think the word pain au chocolat is very common 
uh, in America, but correct me if I'm wrong if you're an American English speaker. But they asked me whether I wanted the chocolate uh, croissant, I believe. Uh, again, I said, okay, if that's what you call it, then yes, can I have the chocolate croissant? Um, again, they were quite confused about what I was asking for because of my pronunciation of the word croissant, uh, which is um, stressed differently to how American English speakers would stress it. So that's another kind of clear difference. Okay, let's move on to the spelling of things uh, because there are quite a few different uh, things where the two versions of English differ from each other. So the most obvious one probably is where British English uses S, American English uses Z. So for example, uh, for the word organize, uh, in British English it's spelled with an S and in American English it's spelled with a Z. Then British English uses uh, the combination of OU in words such as color or honor, um, whereas American English uh, skips the U and just goes for color with an O and an R without the U. Then there's a spelling of the past participle of some regular verbs, such as learned, where American English uh, has ED at the end of them and British English has a T. So for example, learned and learned. Uh, burned and burnt. Um, they sound very similar, but they're actually spelled differently. In some words, American English spellings use an S, where British English spellings use a C. So license and license is the most common example, probably. They are pronounced in the same way, but they are spelled differently. And then words such as center, uh, which I mentioned uh, before in relation to pronunciation, um, they are spelled differently when there is an ER or an RE at the end. So in British English, we spell center with an RE and Americans spell it uh, with an ER at the end. It's the same with words such as meter, uh, which also have the RE or ER at the end. Okay, let's move on to the, to the grammar aspect, which is the most surprising aspect, I think, for a lot of people, uh, because like I said, many people assume that the two languages have the same uh, kind of grammar usage, but there's quite a few differences actually. The main one I have personally noticed is in the use of the past simple and the present perfect tenses. So if you're an English speaker and you don't speak any other languages, you might not be familiar with this terminology, but basically when you say in English, I did something, that's the past tense, and I have done something, that's the present perfect tense. So British English actually uses the present perfect a lot more than American English. So you could say, um, you know, I've done my homework already in British English, whereas in American English, it would be acceptable to say, I did my homework already. Um, and in spoken English especially, I've noticed that where British English speakers would use the present perfect for completed actions in the past, many American English speakers would just use the past simple. The next one which is quite common is the use of the verb gotten, which is the past participle of the, of the word get. So for example, I've gotten uh, a new car, um, whereas a British English speaker would just say I've got a new car, um, because the past simple and the present perfect forms of the verb get are the same in British English. So it's got and got, whereas in American English it's got and gotten. The next difference relates to singulars and plurals. So there is a thing in English called collective nouns. So for example, the word family is a collective noun because it signifies a group of people. Family is not just one person, um, it's um, a number of different people. So British English treats collective nouns as plural, whereas American English treats them as singular. So for example, in American English you might say, my family is really happy, um, but in British English you would say, my family are very happy. Obviously a lot of British English speakers are influenced by the way American speakers uh, speak, um, and it is quite common actually to hear, um, my family is very happy, uh, and so on. Uh, so this is not something that's set in stone, it's something that kind of constantly evolves, especially with, you know, the American version of English being so widespread in, in things like you know, Netflix shows and YouTube and so on. Okay, and the final one that relates to grammar is the word through and how it's used to talk about a period of time. So for example, Monday through Friday, 
uh, which means Monday to Friday, including Friday. Uh, whereas in British English, uh, you would just say Monday to Friday, or you could say Monday to Friday inclusive, which would mean you are including Friday uh, in whatever it is that you're referring to. Okay, and the final one, which is probably very important actually, because it can cause a lot of confusion, like in the example I mentioned to you when I was in America and I asked for a pen au chocolat and they didn't know what that was because apparently they call it a chocolate croissant, uh, in Texas at least. Um, there can be a lot of misunderstandings when it comes to vocabulary and different words that the two Englishes use. So let's go through some examples. I've got some notes, so I will be looking down at my laptop to uh, read them. So the first category is food items, and they're quite popular, actually, popular words when you're watching uh, like food channels on YouTube, for example. Uh, so the first one is cilantro, which is something that you see a lot in American English. In British English, it's just parsley. Uh, the next one is eggplant, uh, which I believe in British English is aubergine. Uh, then there's zucchini, which is uh, kind of funny because I think that the word actually comes from Italian. Uh, in British English, it's a courgette, um, whereas in American English, it's a zucchini. The next one is chips. That's so confusing because uh, it's, it's something that I always um, get confused about and, and I have to kind of think, which one do, do I actually mean? The, the ones in the packet or the ones that are cooked? Um, so chips in British English are basically like a type of fries. Um, and then crisps are the things that you buy in a packet. So like, um, you know, Lay's or Walker's or whatever they're called in, in the country where you live. Then there's cookies versus biscuits uh, in British English um, and soda. Uh, in British English, soda is just a fizzy drink. Okay, the next category of words is words that you use uh, out and about. So for example, a sidewalk. Uh, is what you walk on along the road. Um, in British English, it's called a pavement. Um, then we've got um, gas station, which in British English is a petrol station or a service station. Um, apartment or condo. Uh, actually, what's the difference between an apartment and a condo? I'm not sure. If you are American, let me know in the comments, because I'm always confused about that one. Uh, but essentially in British English, we call it a flat. Um, then you've got a trunk in your car, but in Britain uh, it's called a boot. Uh, American English speakers go on vacation, but British English speakers go on holiday. Um, then we've got mail versus post, and uh, we call a store a shop. So we don't go to the store, we go to the shop, or to the shops. Okay, the next category is education. Uh, so one thing that I find quite confusing about American English is when people talk about school. So they say they went to school uh, to study law, for example. Uh, but in Britain, a school is basically where you go from the age of five to the age of 18. Uh, whereas in American um, English, it means higher education, so a university or a college. And again, that's the confusing thing because Americans talk about colleges, whereas we talk about universities. Okay, and the final category is clothes. Pants in American English are trousers in British English. In British English, pants are basically sort of underwear, what you wear underneath your trousers. Um, then there's sneakers, which in British English are called trainers. And the final one is a sweater, which is what I'm wearing. It's a jumper in British English. So I hope you found this video interesting and useful. Uh, let me know in the comments below um, where, what you call the different things that I mentioned. And, you know, if I made any mistakes in pronunciation or meaning, or, you know, if there's a nuance in the region where you li live uh, or the version of English that you speak let me know in the comments as well. And don't forget to subscribe, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Bye.